So after farming DCD headquarters for about six hours today, not counting the couple hours here and there I put over the last two days trying to farm for this weapon, I was finally able to obtain the exotic shotgun Sweet Dreams. Now for those of you that are here just to find out how to get this weapon, I'm going to show you a couple different ways you can get it. Um, the main one being to farm DCD headquarters on hard or challenging. Uh, I have heard people in my last video that I uploaded on how to get the Merciless saying that they were able to do Jefferson trade on normal and still get it to drop. I don't know. I can't confirm that. These are just some of the comments that I saw. But I got mine from doing challenging. Uh, I got the Merciless from doing challenging Jefferson trade. And I got the Sweet Dreams from doing challenging DCD headquarters. The other missions you can do to farm for this weapon is the Potomac Event Center and the Roosevelt Island Stronghold. All three of these have the same thing in common being that they have named outcast bosses at the end. So any named outcast boss has a chance to drop this weapon. I've also heard you can get it from doing bounties as long as the, the bounty you're looking for is a named outcast bounty. But as I said, I can't confirm. I got mine from doing DCD. As far as the three missions go, Potomac, Roosevelt Island, and DCD, DCD is definitely going to yield you the best results in that you can do this th this one the fastest. I was able to get my speed runs down to about 15 minutes by the end of it. Um, I ran this shit probably 25 times. Um, I did Potomac probably 5 to 10 times, and I did Roosevelt Island uh, about 3 or 4 times. Um, Roosevelt Island is going to take you about 30 minutes. Potomac is going to take you about 20 to 25 minutes. And DCD, like I said, is going to, you can probably get it done in about 15 minutes. So that's going to be your best bet for just trying to farm for this weapon. So yeah, that's how you get it. Now let's address the complete lack of excitement in my voice when talking about this weapon. Um, and that has to do with a couple different reasons. The first one mainly being um, just the sheer amount of time that I had to put in to get this weapon. And then experience just how lackluster it is. This exotic weapon does not feel very exotic to me. Definitely does not provide enough utility to warrant using this over the Chatterbox SMG. Um, so yeah, let's just take a look at the talents on it and we'll talk about why I'm just so unimpressed with this weapon. Um, first off, let's get this right out of the way here. It's basically just an upgraded version of the Lullaby. Um, and that was the same with the Merciless and the Ruthless. The Lullaby and the Ruthless were pre-order bonuses for the Ultimate Edition. And... Like I said, the Sweet Dreams and the Merciless are just upgraded versions of those two guns. Um, the main difference being that the Lullaby only has two talents. Right now, anyways, I know you can upgrade it. Um, and then the Sweet Dreams has three talents. The Sweet Dreams, the first talent is Sweet Dreams. Landing a melee attack on an enemy after swapping to this weapon grants 35% bonus armor and applies the Sandman debuff. Killing an enemy with the Sandman debuff reapplies the bonus armor. Sandman. This debuff prevents the enemy from using armor kits and from receiving healing from any source. Evasive. While equipped, dodging reloads 1% of your current weapon's magazine. So, when I was testing this weapon, I don't know if I'm just reading this wrong or if there's some serious retuning needed for these talents because they do not seem to work the way they are described in the talent description um, for instance this holster talent right here it doesn't even sound like a holster talent it says while equipped which to me makes me think it only works while you're equipping while you have the sweet dreams equipped but this actually works for any weapon um, as long as you have sweet dreams as your secondary which I'm not complaining about but it just reads like it's not a holstered talent. Um, and then also the 1%, it's not 1%. Again, I'm not complaining. Um, it's more like 25%. And I'll throw some clips on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about here. Um, so that, yeah, my CTAR has got 60 in the mag. Um, I take it down to, to zero. I do a roll or a dodge, whatever they call it, and it puts 15 in the mag. So it's like 25% of your magazine, which again, I'm not complaining. It just, that's not the way that the talent reads. Um, and the next issue I have with, with these talents is, so landing a melee attack on an enemy after swapping to this weapon grants 35% bonus armor. So once you swap to the weapon, you land a melee attack, you get 35% of your armor. Okay, good. But then it says killing an enemy with the Sandman debuff 
reapplies the bonus armor. So immediately I'm thinking, okay, I swap the weapon, melee him, I'll get the 35%, and then if I kill him, I'll get 35% more, making that a total of 70% armor. If that was the case, this would be a very strong weapon, but that's not what happened. So when, and I'll throw some clips on the screen while, while I'm talking about this and show you, so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so when you swap to the weapon, you get a melee, you get 35% bonus armor. That only lasts for about two or three seconds. That goes away. Okay, once I figured that out, I was like, okay, you get the bonus armor, and then you get the kill, and then you get 35% back. But that's not what happened. So yeah, I guess I was just reading that wrong. Um, but basically what it does is, so you get the melee, you get the 35%, um, and if you don't kill them, you can see the little, the little debuff symbol above their head. If you don't kill them in the time that that debuff is still active, you have about th two, three, maybe four seconds of that 35% armor. But if you kill them while that debuff is still above their head, it extends that 35% armor out to about six or seven seconds. Which to me just feels kind of underwhelming, um, especially in PvP. And to me, these talents seem to be very PvP oriented. I mean, the... Sandman debuff prevents enemies from using armor kits and receiving healing from any source. I mean, how often are NPCs in the open world and missions healing themselves? I mean, there there's a couple missions with medics and stuff in it, but this is this is obviously meant to be used in PVP, and to me it just seems very very underwhelming compared to some of the other talents you get. I mean, like, just on this high-end vector, close and personal, killing a target within 7 meters grants 50% weapon damage for 5 seconds. And this is an exotic, like, this is an exotic shotgun, and you're getting 35% bonus armor in PvP that already has a super high time to kill. Um, and you only get it for, like, 6 seconds. I don't know, to me, it just, it, like I said, it just it's very underwhelming. Um, I think they could probably push that out to like 10, maybe 15 seconds, seeing as it is an exotic. The holster talent is great. I think I like it. I mean, just being able to roll and, and get 25% of your magazine back is pretty useful. I, like I said, I don't see me using it over the chatterbox. The chatterbox holster talent is miles ahead of the uh, Sweet Dreams talent. Yeah, the, the blabbermouth while holstered reloading your weapon within 5 seconds after kill gives 20% fire rate. Um, yeah, so it's just, I don't know, it, like I said, I'm just unimpressed, uh, especially for the, the time that I put in to get this weapon. I'm just very disappointed. I think it's pretty situational, though. Um, the Sandman debuff would probably be a pretty decent counter to the clutch meta everybody's running right now. For those of you that saw my video, like, last week when I uploaded the clutch talent, um, the, I called it the face tank talent, which basically allowed you to just get up in people's faces and, and still be able to heal yourself. Um, and then a couple days later, Wids uploaded a PvP version of it, which is just fucking insane. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. Um, so yeah, this this could be a potential counter to that. So that's one good thing. I'll, I'll be I'll be on the lookout for that. I might have to to see if he wants to test that. Um, but yeah, other than that, I just I can't see myself using this, um, especially in PvP. There's so many other other good weapons out there. Like I said, the Chatterbox is just insanely powerful. But yeah, that's going to do it for the video, guys. Just a quick rundown of the weapon, the talents on it, and how to get it. Um, so yeah, drop a like on the video if you guys found it useful or informative. I would know I was trying to find information on how to get this forever, at least a good farming uh, method to use to get it. Um, and I was not able to find hardly anything on Reddit. On Actually, no, I did find a video on YouTube. Um, and I'll leave a link to his channel down in the description. His name is Mr. Trips 96 um, So, yeah, shout out to you. Uh, you at least gave me hope that the weapon could actually, actually fucking drop. Because I did that mission, like, I swear to God, at least 25, 30 times. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys' RNG is a lot better than mine. Uh, I hope it doesn't take you as long as it did me. But anyway, subscribe if you want to see some more videos like this. As soon as I find any other exotics or anything interesting in the game, I'll definitely upload it. But yeah, I'm tired of shit, as you can probably tell by my voice. So I'll see you guys later. Peace.